Hiya, it's Becky, and today I'm going to be doing a really simple bezel with a Czech coin bead. And I'm going to be using one of these coin beads that came in the Sam's Bead Box for March, the Beauty of Time box. Um, it actually came with several of them. Um, I had actually ordered extras because I planned out a, uh, a necklace. Um, but this one didn't have a hole going all the way through it. it. It looks like the beginning of a hole here, but it ends right there. And it does not go all the way through to the other end. So I reached out to the folks at Sam's. They're gonna send me a replacement bead so I can actually make my necklace, which will happen next week. Um, and I'll do the, I'll upload the tutorial when I do that. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I would go ahead and bezel this and then I can add it to the necklace that I had been planning as a focal. And it should look really well with that. What I'm gonna be using for this are some 11 seed beads. Now the colors I'm using here are ones that, um, when they add extras to the shop after the, the uh, bead box comes out, they'll usually do a curated set of um, seed beads. Um, and I actually bought the 11 O's and the 8 O's from that because they just the colors go really well and it accentuates and extends the amount of things that you can make with it. Um, so I'm choosing the Luster Turquoise and the Copper Lined Glass uh, Seed Beads, 11 O Seed Beads for this. And then I have some bronze colored uh, 15 O's from my stash that I'm going to be using to tighten up my bezel when I go through it. I am going to be using size D, Nymo beading thread. And I'm using the uh, Nymo beading thread instead of like wildfire because they're, they've all got real soft edges. I'm not gonna be putting any um, crystals or anything with sharp edges on there. There's no um, delicas or anything that, that have those sharper edges. So I'm gonna be using those. Um, I've got my snips for cutting my thread and my needle that I'm using is a wide eye needle. And this is my preferred needle to use. Obviously you can use whichever needle is easier for you to use. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just pull off um, an easy to work with amount of thread, um, about an arm's length. My uh, grandma taught me how to measure a yard by putting the end of uh, the fabric to my nose and then extending my arm away from my body. And so that's what I'm using to measure with is a nose and then an arm length. And I'll probably have some thread left over it and that's okay. And if I don't, I can add thread or take more away. It's fairly easy to add thread to a beading project when you're doing it. So let me get this onto my needle and we'll get started. Now the plan for this is most of it is going to be using the, uh, the copper line seed beads. And then we're just gonna have the turquoise beads as an accent color. And that's because in the necklace that I'm designing, the turquoise color kind of carries through most of it and is an accent color. And I want that to reflect in the, uh, in the focal that I'm going to be making in this, this pendant that I'm going to add to the, the thing. I'm only going to do a, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm feeling a little rough today. Um, I'm only going to be doing a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? bezel <laughs> um, using a peyote stitch. I'm not going to be embellishing it beyond that. So it's just going to be encasing the, uh, the bit. So I've got one 11 that I've moved down to leave about two, maybe three inches of tail on the other end, enough for tying in a knot um, when I get done or weaving back through after I tie in a knot. And I'm gonna use this as a stop bead, but it's also going to be part of the work. So I'm going back through in the same direction that the previous th thread was going in so that it circles the bead like that. And that way it just won't slide off when it's it goes through there. All right, and because I'm going to be using um, this as an accent thing and it's going to be like the edge, um, like the main wall of this around here is going to be the copper ones and it's going to be on the edges on this side and this side that the copper or that the turquoise is. Um, I'm going ahead and, and uh, when I pick up my beads, and this is just for me, for my design things, I'm going to pick up 
um, an alternating turquoise and then copper and then turquoise and then copper and go all, all the way around there. So I start with copper right here. So I'm going to pick up turquoise and then copper and then turquoise and then copper. And I'm going to do this until I have 34 seed beads on my thread. And I got that number by putting a bunch of seed beads on my thread and then wrapping it around the, the thing to see how many of them could comfortably fit all around the outside of this. Oh man, so this is going to be the first two rows that I'm placing on here of, of, uh, of my peyote stitch. And the first time I did peyote stitch, it was um, peyote stitch in the round. And it was really hard for me to wrap my head around which bead I sew into next and where I step up at and what was I doing with that. Um, and I'm doing it on little tiny beads now, but I had to stop what I was doing um, in order to try out something new. Um, and I used these larger beads and I did it that way where I had like one row was these clear beads, the next row was the opaque beads and then the next row was the clear beads so that I could see better what I was doing. And I think it may help if you're sort of new to peyote stitch in the round um, for me to show you how it works with these with the alternating beads because we're going to be skipping a bead and then sewing into the next one and skipping a bead and sewing into the next one because that's how it works. So being able to visualize, oh, this is the one I sew into next will help um, if you wanted to do this as, as following along or using some of the same colors or different colors. It depends on what you want to do. Okay, so I've got, how many do I have? I haven't been counting. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hold on, is that right? How do I have an even number One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I should have, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so nine copper beads, nine copper beads, and eight turquoise. Okay. There we go. So I have 17 so far. So I'm going to keep going until I get to 34, um, which will be. <clears throat> until I have 17 turquoise beads. That's how I'm going to count it. It's going to make it a lot easier for me to go that way if I just do, uh, since they're every other one, and I can multiply it by two. Hooray, math with Becky. So, sorry this is counting with Becky. But, I mean, because here's the thing, is I was real afraid of bead weaving um, when I was starting out. And I just buckled down and I started doing it. And it helps if you can start with larger beads, um, just so you can get uh, an idea of how they get structured and how they're, they, the first bead interacts with the next one and where the line goes into. Um, when I'm doing it, it feels a lot more like crochet to me than anything else because it's so structured. Um, and each bead interacts with the bead above it and the bead bead below it and the bead next to it and where it is and how you attach it is how bead weaving works. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so two more of those. Come on. 16. 17. All right, I'm just gonna double check that this is the right amount for this coin bead. By holding this down, holding that down, and then pulling this tight-ish. Okay, so that is going to fit all the way around this bead. And so I'm going to move this out of the way because I won't need it yet for a little while. And what I'm going to do is go back through the start of these from the bottom up. I'm going to go through the first 
four beads. And you can go through the first, you know, eight beads if you want. You can go through the first ten beads. You can go all the way around it if you want. But I'm doing the first four. Um, actually, no, let's do the first five because I want to skip the uh, copper lined in order to add uh, sew into the turquoise because I'm going to be sewing into the turquoise beads as I go around. This is how I planned it. Planned it that way. And that's just so that I've got a row of um, copper beads on the other side of the turquoise because these are the first two rows. So my first row is this, the copper beads, and my second row are the turquoise beads. I know it's confusing, but that's how it works. <laughs> So I'm going to be adding another row of copper beads. So that's my third row, and I'm going to be sewing into my second row, which is the turquoise beads. But first, before I sew into that, I'm gonna grab a copper 11 -0 and then sew into my turquoise bead. Then I'm going to skip the next bead, which is a copper bead. I'm gonna skip that and sew into the next turquoise bead after I pick up a copper 11-0 from my pile. And I do that, and I'm going to do this all the way around until I get back here to the first bead that I added, which is, you can see it's two of them. So I'm going to go all the way around here. Um, you guys get to time travel while I go the slow way all the way around, because I don't think you want to watch me doing every single bead all the way around. Um, I'm just gonna do one more before I turn this off, um, just so you can see how it's adding. And this part, the first like three rows here, is usually the most confusing, the most, uh, I have a harder time figuring out where I am versus the other ways when I'm doing uh, peyote in the round. So it does actually really help to have alternate colored beads as you go through. So I'm just going to do one more. Pick up an 11 0. Skip the next bead. I keep dropping my 11 0. This is another reason why I'm going to skip ahead so that you guys don't have to watch me dropping my beads all over, all over the place. So I'm going to skip that next bead after I come out of this turquoise one. I skip the next one and then I sew into the next turquoise bead. So I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to show you how to step up as soon as I get back here to this first one that I added in my third row. Okay, so I have added one seed bead between each of my um, turquoise beads <clears throat> all the way around, and that has made my third row, and I'm about to add this one last 11-0 and sew into the first turquoise bead that I came out of when I joined this in the round and then in order to continue on and to go up when I sew into this next turquoise bead I'm going to step up and come out of the copper 11 0 right next to it so that I'm on the next row up I just wanted to show you how you can count how many rows of peyote stitch you have real quick while I am looking at this and this is how you know that you've got three rows. You start at the bottom, which is this copper row, and you go one, two, three, diagonally. Diagonally. That's how you know how many you've got. Now I'm going to do um, two more rows with just the copper bead by adding a, uh, an 11 to my needle and then you can see how it, it kind of steps up like the crenellations on a, a castle. It, it, the turrets on the castle, they, they pop up. Um, so I'm coming out of this 11 here. here, means I'm skipping the turquoise bead and sewing into the copper bead. And that's gonna just add another row there, right? So I'm going to do that all the way around once, then I'm going to step up like I just showed you how to do and do it another time. So after two more rounds, I'm going to meet you back here and we are going to add the uh, turquoise beads in um, so that we can get some height along the side wall 
of this bezel because this is a nice fat bead and we want it to be able to curve all the way up and over the edges of both sides. So I will see you back here in a minute after we do that. Okay, so now I have added two more rows of peyote stitch and after I added the last 11 0 here, I stepped up to the next row so that I'm coming out of the top. And here's an easy way for you to count how many rows of peyote stitch you have. You start at the bottom and then you can count diagonally like like this, one, two, three, four, five. Or you can count directly up one column, like this one where you've got one, two, three, and then add the row next to it, or the, the column next to it. So there's two over here. So this is five rows of peyote stitch. So I'm going to be adding two more rows to this. You can see right here it is starting to fit pretty well around the bead, but there's it just barely um, covers the, uh, the edge as far as the edge width goes. But I want it to be taller on both sides so that it will curve inwards when I add the 15 O's. So I'm gonna be adding two more of these and I want to do another row with turquoise beads over here on this side. And then another row after that of the uh, the copper beads. So that's what I'm going to be adding here. I'm going to start picking up my turquoise beads and doing the same thing that I did with the previous two rows where I pick up an 11-0 and sew into the next sticky outy crenellated bead in order to fill in that space that is missing between those beads with that next one because these are all you know there's it's just offset rows they're offset like like bricks in uh, in the thing so I'm going to do this all the way around when I'm finished adding my turquoise beads for my my um, accent row I'm going to add another row row of my fifth or my copper 11 O's and I will meet you back there at the end of that because that's when we're going to switch to our 15 O's to start closing up one end um, of this. And it's probably going to be the back end that we close up first. Um, although you could, because of this very simple bezel, um, either end could be front or back, um, especially since it is a two-sided bead. So we're going to do this. I like the way this looks. Where I've got my, my, my beads there. I didn't want to overwhelm it with turquoise color. I just wanted little accents of it. I wanted it to accentuate with that. So I'm going to continue all the way around, step up, and then all the way around again with the, uh, with the copper. First turquoise, then copper. So that's two more rows that I'm adding. So I should have at the end of this seven total rounds of peyote stitch with my 11 O's. Okay, so I have finished my seven rows of peyote stitch with my 11 O's, and you can see how many rows there are by either counting two of these columns. So I've got four in this column and three on this column. So that makes seven rows, or you start at the bottom and just go up diagonally, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, when I finished my last one, I went ahead and stepped up so that I'm coming out of this one. Uh, I just wanna show you how you can verify that this is going to be large enough and that it will fit. You see it's much taller than that by at least one or two, maybe one and a half rows, but that means that it will curve around the edge of the uh, the coin bead. And it does actually fit around that on the inside. So once I tighten up the edges of each of these bezels, it will be a nice little pocket, a cozy place for that coin bead to live and uh, and we can do that. Now in order to get these edges to go inward, we need to uh, close in and make the diameter of this circle smaller. Uh, to do that, I'm going to just go ahead and switch over to my smaller beads, and these are the 15 O's that came from my stash. So I'm going to pick those up and do the same thing, peyote stitch, with the 15 O's, where I'm going to pick up a 15 O, and you can see how much smaller they are. And then I'm going to sew into the next 11 0 that I already had. 
and that's going to start after I go around it's going to start kind of bringing those edges in and when I tighten it and I'm going to do two rows of 15 O's so I've got um, this row that I'm doing here and then I'm going to do another row so there's going to be another 15 O's sitting on top of this after I go back around for my second row so I'm going to go through my first row grabbing a 15 0 going through the 11 0 and that's going to start bringing that in a little bit closer as I tighten up this string so I'm going to go all the way around give it a tug <laughs> and then go all the way around again because when I step up I'm going to be stepping up through this speed and then I'm going to add another 15 0 all the way around in order to do that so I will see you in a minute after I've finished adding my 15 0s on the Okay, I have added two rows of 15 0 seed beads to the back of my work. And you can see that it has brought the edges in and given me a nice edge around the outside of this bezel. So it's curved everything around. Um, now, if at this point you want to, you can go back through that last row of 15 0s and tighten it up. I don't think I need to, so what I'm gonna do so I'm going to take my thread back through my work to the other side and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side now to take my work back through I'm going to go in one direction through my work I'm going down through this and then to the next bead in a row and I'm just working diagonally across um, just so I'm not going through things the wrong way or doubling back on things. I'm going to go all the way through here until I'm coming out on this side. Now that I'm coming out here on this side, I can start adding two more rows of 15 O's around the edges. I'm going to do one row first before I pop this bead in because I am going to want to do the second row while the bead is in place. Um, but it's kind of slippery while I'm working on it. So I'm going to do one row of the 15 O's, put the bead in, tighten it up, and then do one more row of the 15 O's. But you can see on this side, that it is going to hold it just fine. So I'll meet you back here after I do my first row of 15 O's, and then we're gonna pop that bead into place. Okay, so here I am, I have done one round with the bronze 11 O's and I have not tightened that up. So I'm gonna stick this bead in here, get it nestled nicely give this a small tug and then I'm going to go around one more time adding the 15 O's because this is my second row of 15 O's and I'm going to go all the way around here and then tighten it up so that it holds this bead inside its little coat it's got a little coat it's going to be cozy going to be cozy and pretty and special and the thing is with this you can take a basic bezel like this and then you can add embellishments on it like you can add crystals along the edges you can do all sorts of real fun things with it I'm not going to I would like um, like the rest of my necklace is going to be statement enough with what I've got planned I think this um, especially with these other colors is going to be really about as much statement as I need I don't want it to uh, to outshine the rest of the necklace that I'm doing uh, it's all about balance right so I'm gonna do this um, one thing that I'm gonna want to do definitely after I get this in place and get this tightened up is going to be to add a bail to this so that I can attach it to the rest of my, um, my focal. 
Um, and in order to do that, I can either use a wire guard and attach it to the top, or I could do a, like a ladder stitch loop with these 11 O's or even some 15 O's. Um, or, and I think this is what I'm gonna do, I am going to attach one of the eight O's that I've got to the top of my little coin bead pendant here because I'm going to be uh, doing stringing it along on uh, beading wire when I attach to the other thing and I think the beading wire through the 8 is going to be nice and secure um, when I do that. So let me get all the way around here. I don't think I need to pause this again. Did I go through two? I did. I went through two. I need to back up and go back through that one. There we go. You don't want to skip one of these. All right, now I can go back through that. I just got carried away because I was talking while I was beating. You can see I haven't really tightened it up very much, but when I do, it's going to be a little jacket that this lives in. Let me get it tightened all the way up and then I will weave around to the edge, get my 8 O as my bail on, and then when I'm finished, I can weave back in and tie off my threads from my, uh, my excess thread here that I didn't tie off earlier and burn down my edges. I'm not really finished. Let me, let me go through. I'm almost all the way around. Almost all the way around with my, my bezel. My little sunburst bezel. I love it so much. I'm so glad I decided to do this. This was such a happy, happy occurrence. Life gives you beads without holes. Make a bezel, right? And this edge is still pretty loose because I have not finished and tightened it up all the way around. All right, and here I've got the last one. Now, instead of stepping up and going through this, I'm going to just go through this one bead. <laughs> Pull that tight. There we go. And now I'm going to travel around with my thread to probably about here. And I'm going to add an 8-0. So you can see it's gonna it's gonna hang out just fine in here. It's not gonna slip out. I'm gonna add an 8-0 to the top so that when I string this on the necklace that I'm going to be making in another video um, it will connect really nicely to the rest of my thing and I'm going to go ahead and use the 8 O's um, I mentioned already that I got the 11 O and 8 O sets so I'm going to use an 8 O in the same colorway the uh, the turquoise luster and that's gonna be basically my little teeny bale that's gonna hold it on to the rest of the focal that I'm going to be using. So let me travel up with my with my thread. I'm going to go in to this bead, this bead, and then that bead, I think. Hold on. Through the beads, Vex. Through the beads. All right. And, all right, I want one of these ones that's in the middle between all of those, actually. Go all the way through to that one. Okay. 
I don't need you to be trapped in there. Let's get that out of the way. And I'm gonna grab the 80. And I'm gonna go back through that bead that I just came out of. Same bead. And then back through the 80. And then back through that bead. And the next bead. That has attached that 8 to the top. And that's what I'm going to use when I make my necklace in order for it to go all the way through. Now I need to sew through to join up with my other tail over here. Actually, I'm running out of thread, so I'm going to take my needle off and thread it onto the end and bring this through. Oh, see, this is probably the worst thing about the Nymo thread on these big eye needles is that they get the filaments separate. So let me get the other, um, get another needle on here and then I can tie these off and burn them and I will have a finished bezel. So I'm going to do that. Oh, you know what? Also, there we go. That's why that wasn't going very far. <laughs> All right, let's get you off of here. Okay, now that I've got both of my threads hanging out together in the same place, well, for the most part, hold on, why is that in there, like that, Ugh. there we go, now I can tie it off, um, some folks will just tie off with a square knot, I'm going to tie off with a surgeon's knot, which is like a square knot. You start off and you do it that way. But then on your second pass, you wrap this end twice through the knot and then pull it tight. And that should do me. And now I can burn off this end. Where is my lighter? Okay. I can never keep track of these. All right. And that is a completed bezel for this focal on a coin bead from Sam's Bead Box, Beauty of Time. These are some of the other beads that came in the box. And I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek of the necklace that I'm gonna be making. Um, waiting for the bead that is replacing this one to get here so that I can actually make a tutorial on it. Um, but this is a bracelet that goes with the necklace. So you can see how the, uh, the turquoise gets uh, echoed through the rest of this. And uh, so I'll be making a necklace similarish to this. I'll also show you how to make the bracelet at the same time that I'm doing the necklace so that we can have it all together. But uh, look for that tutorial next week or maybe later this week. <laughs> I don't know, it depends on when that bead gets here. Um, but it should be here pretty soon. Uh, and if you wanted to, you can actually do this with just about any coin-shaped bead um, or cab. It's a really, really simple bezel. Uh, I did not reinvent the wheel on this. Uh, there are other ones, ways that you can do bezels. You could do like right angle weave. Um, but this is just how I'm going to make it so that this bead that doesn't have a hole in it can still be part of the party. It can still be uh, be there with its friends. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoy having a great week and happy beating. <laughs> Bye.